always want to talk for us, you know, and act as if we don't know what we want. The fact is that men and women are different and we don't want the same things and women do want to get married and live a life that is fulfilling but the thing is that most reasonable and sensible women do not want to have to choose between because it's a buffet life should be a buffet a variety of things to choose from you don't have to grab green beans from the buffet and sit at your table looking over at the buffet thinking why did i not get mashed potatoes why did i not get chicken why did i not get tofu why did i not get eggs you know you want to fill up your plate with all the things that you want and then you want to go sit down and eat and maybe get up and grab some more or grab dessert you know and i think that's that's what most women want most women want the happy marriage and want um a a career a stable career where they probably don't have to work as hard but get the opportunity to do what they love and you know have the opportunity to have children and raise their children themselves they want all of these things it's not like it's it's not possible it's possible you know and i'm kind of like sick of all of these feminists trying to talk for women and tell women what they want and what they don't want because most of these feminists aren't women you know and they're not women they don't speak for women they're speaking for themselves and these feminist groups are made up of very much emasculated women or women passing or women presenting they're not real feminist in the sense of the word which the word is when when a word is so broad that it is just there's no definition and the definition keeps expanding and changing and transforming then you know you got a problem and you're probably playing playing around with a sick group of people that can transform their meaning and their organization to whatever they please so i say that to say that I don't I don't want to be a part of this community and I I'm not speaking on behalf of them but I'm speaking as an actual woman who has a vagina biologically and that has the Y chromosome you know a woman with natural breast and natural woman um hormones in my body that was pumped in my body since before birth you know i speak for those women women who choose to be named and called women and not cisgender or birthing people i speak for those people because that's what i am and i'm not a woman who's afraid to say that i'm a woman and who's afraid to say what a woman is you know and i know i'm straying from the point but back to the buffet and the buffet is not about having many lovers the buffet is having a full a vital variety of life and you can put whatever you want to add to to um as a as a symbol to each element of the buffet uh, we could say green beans is you having a love for hiking and you know being in the forest and um being outdoors in nature and egg could be that you love caves and you want to go into caves and explore that and each element of the buffet could be symbolic of something that you 
could possibly want to be a part of your life, it doesn't have to just be children and it doesn't have to just be marriage or a husband and it doesn't just have to be city life and it does it just doesn't have to be country life it could be a full all-round life that you live and that you choose from and that you keep going back to the buffet to see what it is that I like and what it is that I want and what it is that I want to explore at this moment and am I full and can I take this on and and really digest this to the fullness thereof without hurting myself or others, you know, because the worst thing is that you take from this buffet and you eat it and you cannot keep it down and now you've made a mess at the dinner table, you know, because you're throwing up and barfing over everybody sitting amongst you. So it's just like, I don't want these feminist women to define who I am and to say, oh, women don't belong in the kitchen. Women need to make more money. Surely I would love to make more money um, than my husband for bragging rights, you know, but not to be above him and not for him to be below me because I will never have a man who is ever below me because I can never respect any man below me. My man has to be beside me, not in front of me, not behind me, beside me, my equal. Not, I don't want to be above anybody, even if I am uh, morally above. There must be something that equalizes the situation where we are equals. You know, and this very radical approach to life where men are seen as these evil trinkets to use to to take from to abuse to hurt to to curse and to 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 just treat in the worst way it's just like whether your father was good to you or not you literally had to have had a father to be to be in this world at this moment and if you think about that and think about why you're here for a second and just try to go far back from before you came here you know then you'd realize that there's really nothing to moan about and yeah we go through all these phases of life where we're just you know we're we're up or down we're sideways we're underneath the toilet you know we we go through things in life and these things either make us or break us make us stronger teach us lessons you know it's the human evolution and the human revolution (laughs) excuse me But it's really nothing to moan about. And I know men, some men make it harder for women to, um, you know, live good lives. But we also have to be responsible for what we're creating because it is a fact that whatever we think about is what we're creating so we have to be very um very conscious of what world am i creating with my thoughts with my mind with my with my energy you know and i can tell you from a girl who's been to hell and back several times that it was my thoughts that brought me there. It was I that brought me there. It was nothing anybody did to me, whether they did it to me or not. I could have chosen to make different decisions. I could have chosen to be more aware and more co- conscious. I could have chosen to take better care of myself and look out for myself better and put myself first. And I'm, I still struggle with that, by the ways, you know, regardless of where I am in life right now I still struggle with putting myself first I still struggle with loving myself I still struggle 
you know, I still struggle and hard too, you know, we all struggle, we all struggle, but it's not fair or wise or prudent or or anything to put all of the blame on any one sex because when you put the blame on any person you really you're not taking responsibility for your part to play the part that you play in whatever the situation is whatever the situation is you have a part to play because somewhere into down deep down into your subconscious mind your psyche is that same thing that is being expressed in the outer in the outer world so then How do you change that or transform that or transmute that into something more uplifting, more positive, something that you actually want to, something that you actually want to experience and create in the outer world, you know? And let me tell you, I have demons, I have, or I've had demons I've had things about myself that I've projected out into the outer world and have made them so huge and so big that it blows up in your face continually and you really 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 have to dig deep and try to figure out how do I transform this how do I make this something that I'm proud of one day because the fact is you really can't live your life in these like cycles and loops that really keep you down because the momentum of your dream is then spiraling so far beyond your reach that you will forever feel as if you're catching up to it and that is the most daunting and discouraging feeling you could ever feel but once you realize that you are at the perfect place at the perfect time and really nothing is wrong because where else could you be right now where else could you be if you're here you know where else could you be really where else could you be There is nowhere else you could be but where you are right now. So it's hard. It's tough. It's not an easy life. Aiming to be the perfection that you are. Because you are perfect. And I hate it when people say, oh, you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, we are. We were perfectly created we're perfectly made, we are perfect, we are perfect, but once we can take away all that dusty fog, that black fog away from the light, all the darkness so that we can see the light, that is the perfection, that is the greatness, that is the perfectness, because we were created in light, and we are the light. And I just, if anybody listens to this, I just want them to know that, you know? And I know perhaps my tone and my delivery may sound superficial or very much intellectual and not like a lived experience because that's just the mood that I'm in right now you know but honey 
I can tell you, I've lived it. I'm living it right now. And it's challenging. You know, it's it's challenging. But that's that's what it is. It's a challenge to it's a challenge to um to overcome. It's hurdles that you jump over. And if you're not a sportsman, you can just crawl under them or go under. But it's best to go over. It's it's more enlightening. It's more freeing when you jump over it, you know? It feels so much better to jump over the hurdle than to just crawl under the whole way. Because then you're on your fucking hands and knees, just like struggling and begging yourself to push through. When if you just take that leap, and it doesn't matter if the hurdles fall, you know, some will fall, some will stay up. You aim for your best and don't worry about what's going to fall, you know? We don't worry about that. We just keep pressing on. You know. But um. Yeah. I. I just feel like. I live. In a world. That is just. Really fucked up. And I hate it here. I don't want to go back to my world, which is still right here, but it's more imaginative, it's more creative, it's more beautiful, it feels way better, it's very much like a fairy tale, that's the world I like, that's the world that I live in, that's the world that I believe in, and nothing here is real unless I give it my attention to be real, so... Things have held me down, you know. Things had held me down. You know, the demons. Everybody has them. Actually, I don't want to speak for everybody because not everybody has them. A lot of people do have demons, you know. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's quite all right. Um, I'm working on mine. Definitely. Because it's too much. (sighs) But, um, yeah, I don't want anybody talking for me. Because in a perfect world, I have my family. My family comes first. And of course, I want to be able to take care of them very well because I feel like anything that comes after me should be better and greater and have more resources and should come in a place of love and wealth and prosperity so that they don't have to experience anything that I have, but to be just as strong and resilient without having to suffer for that and they may have to learn lessons differently you know without the struggle bus without that and I think that's very much doable and that's very much what I want for my children for my life and for my children for my offsprings, for my marriage, for my relationships, and for my love. You know, I don't want to have to struggle just to learn lessons, you know. Um, but I feel as if I am on a tangent and I'm babbling. So, 
I'm just going to end my voice note here and continue the conversation off offline. <laughs>